Welcome, everyone, to the L7C Podcast Wrestling Edition. You heard that right. This is a wrestling edition podcast. We are back to our regularly scheduled programming with our bi-weekly wrestling updates. And we have our wrestling expert with us, Jacob Mason. How are you doing today, sir? Dude, I'm so good. Pumped to be back. Pumped to talk some wrestling. Yeah, man. It's been a couple couple weeks. Uh, last time you guys heard from us was our wrestle. Mania 38 review, and now we're back to just give you loads and loads of news of what's happened since then in all of wrestling. We got a lot of subjects, a lot of hot hot topic issues, and we're just going to get right into it. So, Jacob, let's start first with AEW. Um, AEW came out of nowhere on April 20th and said they're doing with New Japan Pro Wrestling, the first ever joint pay-per-view event. Uh, they're calling it AW, hashtag AWX, New, New Japan Pro Wrestling, Forbidden Door, live at the United Center in Chicago, Sunday, June 26. Tickets go on sale actually next week. So, Jacob, man, what are you thinking about this huge pay-per-view event with, with AW New Japan Pro Wrestling? Yeah, I love it. And the fact that it's in Chicago, it literally couldn't be in a better town to do it. Uh, New Japan just had their uh, Windy City pay-per-view thing over there in Chicago, and they're coming right back to do the Forbidden Door. I I love it because the options of matches you can do with storylines going forward or creating new storylines, it's endless. I mean, they've already... uh, you know, they had on last Friday, they had Ishii versus Adam Cole, you know, which is just a great, was a great match. So going forward, it's like, I think the biggest question is, who's Okada face? Because you know he's got to be there. Do, do you have do you have Okada versus CM Punk, Daniel Bryan, John Moxley, yeah, Adam that's- Page? That's a good. Or do you have do you have him or do you have Kenny come back? Mm, I I feel like that's a good pay per view for Kenny to come back because it's so huge. And you brought up CM Punk, and that goes into another thing. There was one episode of AEW where you had like a face to face with Adam Hangman Page. Is it too soon? Is it time for Punk Page? Is that going to be the main event of this card in Chicago? where you know that crowd would be hot for punk. Like it just sounds like it's building to a perfect storm. I don't know. Um, Cause honestly, I don't, I don't think punk. I don't think punk needs a title yet. Okay. Go, going forward. I, I think your next title guy has to be MJF. Okay. Okay. Because Let's say so. There's there's no better heel right now than MJF. So right. him taking it away from Adam Cole to be super heelish, and then to have Punk end up taking it from MJF storyline wise, I think it'd be great because Punk and MJF have already had their feud going before. Mm-hmm. So. I don't know. I, I I really don't want to see Punk versus Page at, at Chicago because they're both Uber faces. True. That is true. And you met Adam Page. You said Cole earlier. Yeah, yes, I met, I met Adam Page. <laughs> right. yeah. But I'm just thinking, like, this is going to be so huge. Like, the main event, like, Page has, I mean, he's the champ. He has to be the main event unless they're going to have, like, Okada versus Punk or, like, what do you, that's what I'm trying to think of, like, what's going to be the main event at this card? Because it's going to be massive. In my opinion, it has to be Adam Page. Adam Page has to be the main event because he is a champion. Mm-hmm. And what match do you put him in? I mean, do, do, do you put him in, you know, Okada versus Page? Like, for the title. just a regular match? Uh, you got to put it for the title. You got to put some stakes. But at the same time, if you put 
Okada and Page, who are both faces in their own companies, mm-hmm. possibly some of the biggest faces you have. Mm-hmm. Who do you have to lose that match? I feel like I feel like you book yourself into a corner because each company is going to want their guy to win. Right. You know, AEW, considering they're putting on the event, should have Adam Page win. Mm-hmm. But you want to keep that good faith going with New Japan to do this cool shit in the future. You book yourself into a corner where you can't really, I don't know if you can have Okada versus Adam Page. So then you would have to have Okada versus, this must be someone big enough, like Okada versus Adam Cole. I mean, I feel like that one, you wouldn't book yourself that big into a corner. Yeah, I, Okada, um, Okada versus Adam Page would be, or Adam Cole would be fine. Hmm. Okada versus Daniel Bryan. Yeah, that's a good one too. We've thought about DB. You know, um, and we don't know, like I said earlier, we don't know if Kenny's coming back or not. If Kenny's going to come back, I feel like he has to come back at this pay per view. And then, and then you have all the other crazy matches that, I mean, what's Jay White going to do? What's the Young Bucks going to do? What's literally name anyone off that roster, off either roster? What are they going to do? How long do you think the pay-per-view is going to be? Because this is the tough part. If you have two whole companies, definitely not everyone is going to be on this card from the men's end. Because you got to have women's matches too. So it's like, if you get left off of this card, it's like, I, I don't know what to tell you. Like, they're only going to have the best of the best for this one. Right. <sighs> I, I don't know. I'm, I would guess probably a four hour pay per view. Okay. I feel like that would be good, but throw in like an hour pre show so you can throw in, I don't know, like Dark Order stuff or the acclaimed or, you know. Um, personally, I really want to see Cole Cabana versus Yano or Yano. Mm-mm. Basically, it's, it's Colt Cabana versus the New Japan Colt Cabana, and I just want to watch that match. So I hope that match, it got to be a great pre show match. Yeah, because they haven't, I'm assuming it's going to be Sunday at like 8 o'clock, because they don't have a time yet for the start. But if they're going to do four hours, they should start at 7, so that it could be done by 11. But we're going to see, man. It's in Chicago in the United Center, one of the wrestling safe havens in the pl- on the planet. That is going to be really, really, really cool. So let's what? stick. Go ahead. What match would you like to see? Like if you if you could pick any match off the top of your head, two wrestlers, one from AEW, one from New Japan, who would you like to see? Oh, I would like to see I think Okada and Daniel Bryan. And the reason I'm saying that is and why this thing is also so big. This is gonna be the first time a lot of people there. Are going to see any New Japan like pro like live, like that's a big freaking deal for the people buying the pay per view who can't stay up or watch New Japan like whatever it's on. It's like so if it's me, you got to get the biggest star they have against a really really big star you have who could wrestle so that the crowd's like all right if they're putting this guy Okada versus Daniel Bryan then he's the real deal for like the casual. Fans. And I feel like that'd just be a really good match. So, like, just seeing the presentation, I think that would be the match, and Daniel Bryan would do do the honors. Yeah. Good, good choice there. But let's stay with AEW, man. During this time frame that we've been a little away, the guy, Tony Khan, he, he was getting dragged through the mud a bit because he went on Twitter and was talking about an army of bots who were the reason AEW was getting some anti uh, aw online community hate and man everyone tore his ass a new one using like his quotes and flipping it their own way like becky lynch saying oh the only non-becky lynch fans in the crowd are bots and things like that what'd you think of khan's comments i i don't know what the hell the guy was thinking (laughs) unless he's just trying to get like where any drama is better than like no drama if people are talking like that's all you care about at the end of the day Mm -hmm. i i don't know like Bro, you basically started like the world's coolest, biggest indie company. 
-hmm. theoretically. Welcome to the internet wrestling community. People will turn on you in a heartbeat just for shits and gigs. Yes. So, I mean, we've literally been tearing into WWE for years now because of dumb shit. Mm -hmm. So, of course, AEW is going to get flack. I mean, army of bots. I I don't know. I don't know what the hell. Maybe he's drunk. I, I have no idea, honestly. Yeah, that was bad, man, because then Braun Strowman came out literally two weeks ago saying how Co- Tony Khan pays the dirt cheeks and blackballs AEW wrestlers from CYN shows. I'm like, what is Tony Khan's just getting blasted left and right recently? This, all right, so the Control Your Narrative shows, mm-hmm. show, shows, I think they've only had one show, maybe two now. Yeah. Is Tony Khan really blackballing AEW wrestlers? Because pretty much AEW wrestlers can do whatever they want outside of AEW as long as it doesn't interfere with their schedule. Yeah. I mean, Joey Janela puts on, you know, his he's got his own like little spring break shows he does a couple times a year. Like he's basically he does his own promoting, you know, mm-hmm. for his own shit. So I mean, you got the Hardys who are going to be a uh IWC, which is kind of like a localish, very big indie promotion, um, they're going to be there. Uh, you see a bunch of a bunch of AEW guys who actually came from that promotion, but you literally see people in AEW doing indie shows all the time, right? On the side, if they want to. So I I don't see how, honestly, that that control your narrative show is absolute garbage. So I don't know. What worries me, I feel like Braun Strowman going forward could very easily be the next Ryback. Ooh, that is, that's a take. Because Ryback, anytime Ryback does a poll saying, where should I go next wrestling-wise, everyone does retire. And he always reports to Twitter saying that it's a bot. But those are real people saying, nah, dude, we don't want you back. I don't know if... I don't know if Braun could get that's going to be t- that's bad. And you're a Braun guy saying that. Oh, I'm a big Braun guy. I like Braun. I, I liked Braun in WWE. I was sad to see him go, but dude, you're saying some really dumb shit. I mean, he is dating Blandy McBlanderson, so maybe that has something to do with it. I'm not sure. I, I don't know. <sighs> Uh, it was just an interesting an interesting thing and just recently as of like this week Becky Lynch we all know who Becky Lynch is talking about the AEW's women division she said the AEW's women division is not as good as the WWE women's division she feels like they aren't being represented the same way they are they don't get as much time as uh the WWE women get and frankly she says they're not as good as we are uh, she said competition is great and it's great for there to be another place. I have a good friend, Ruby Soho, for people in WWE that used to be Ruby Riot. She'd love to see her be a champion one day, get the spotlight she deserves. Competition is always great, but over here we are on another level right now. And man, we are on another level. Jacob, what? Obviously, Becky's going to say her stuff's better because that's where she works. And she's not afraid to talk about anything. What did you think about when you saw Becky Lynch's comments? So when I first seen the comment, I was like, well, you kind of almost had to break it down into everything she said. Like you can't, you can't do one general blanket statement over this. Yes. So yes, WWE's women division is still way better than AEW's. Me and you have been very vocal about how, trash the aew women's division was especially when they first started they have got they have gotten better yes they're they're not wwe level absolutely not it's not even close and then when you say um the women aren't represented or aren't represented as good or as much as wwe is that's where i was like you literally have four people who are being represented. I I mean, honestly, you, you, you're going to have your, well, until Bailey comes back, I mean, you have your four horsewomen, you have Asuka, 
Who just came Ronda back. Who <laughs> just came back. Hell yeah. Shout out. Oh, that Austin. was a great pop if you haven't seen it. That was a, the crowd pop for her. But I will say with the women, though, you, you do got to throw in Bianca now. Yes, that's, that is true. So six. So uh, wait, four. Asuka's five. Bianca's six. Then Rousey, seven. Like those are the seven top women. Six and a half. Six and a half. So six and a half of the top. Oh, because Ronda's not there all the time. But <laughs> her baby's still hurt. But six and a half, seven. Those are the top seven women in WWE right now. And we're just talking main roster. If we name. So you got Britt Baker. You got Thunder Rosa. You got Jay. Like after those, three, who who are the next top women in AEW? Yeah, Tay Conti. But is she really a top woman, or is it because of she's now in that Sammy whatever is crap storyline? It's because of the Sammy thing. But yeah, she is, I understand. But at this point, it's kind of like one of those things with the AEW's women division. If you're mm-hmm. on main TV and not dark elevation, they're seeing something with you. Okay. So. Is she a top person? No. But you could definitely see something in the future with her. Um, they I have did, a question. Did... I have a question then. So then what's the difference? I guess that's where the thing goes. Like, what's the difference between what the Tay Conti and someone like Dana Brooke? Because Dana Brooke is on TV almost every week. She's definitely not any of the top women stars. But she's on TV for the comedic bit in the relationship with um, Reggie. But I'm, Tay and Sammy, their relationship is actually like a real relationship, it seems. So I guess that's what I'm saying. Like, I, you need more like main event players. And she brought up Ruby, who we both were happy that she went over there. But has she been like presented in a true main event fashion? Uh, she was there for first, like, you know month or so mm-hmm. but nothing really has come much of that right i mean it you make a really valid point with the whole dana thing I'm, that's because, what i'm saying man and i didn't even bring up nxt because i mean even though it is not our black and gold nxt you have three women down there as a team that run the damn show yeah, and that uh, Nikita Lyons is taking she's, over the impact. She's taking over, too. She's doing really... So you have Toxic Attraction, and then you have Nikita, who's taking over. So that's four. We still have, like, Io Shirai, who's there. Like, there's still some, like, players. And it's just like, when you said Tay, it's like Dana, and I'm like... I was looking through the internet, too. We always say, we're going to do this early in our podcast. We, don't, we usually save her name late. Tessa's still out there. <laughs> yeah we've always said tony we know you and your pops are rich drive that brinks truck to phil phil brooks's house and go talk to aj get her out i still wonder why is ember moon not signed dude i don't know who by the Bull way should have been the one I, to beat Asuka. i don't know yeah I was looking at her. I was looking on like social media. I was like, what woman is still out there that's really good in free agent? She's still out there. Yeah. Come yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, Be- Becky's not wrong. She's not completely right, but no. she's, but she's more right than she is wrong. Yes. Yes. Because like, it's hard too because you're like you're comparing if you just compare the seven and if you take out Ronda who was not even famous because of WWE because of UFC and Bianca who just came up those other the four have had six seven years of build up from NXT to where they're at right now correct it's not like these people who are just like still finding their footing because a lot of these girls left WWE. Because they weren't getting the shine because of the four. Right. I mean, it, I mean, maybe it's one of those things. That it's, it's just going to take a while to keep building up your stars. Yeah. I, I, I mean, not, not, because I mean, 
AEW can definitely make stars. I think the primus example of that right now is Hook from AEW. That crowd goes freaking nuts for when his music drops. And him and Dan Housen are going to have a match. And I, I'm so excited for that. Mm-hmm. Full blown. But he's he's an outlier. Yeah. That dude just, I mean, whatever it is, he has it. And he send him to the moon. Dude's got it. So, but everyone else, it's going to take a little bit to build. It's going to take a little bit to do something. What I think is going to be interesting is you have a Ring of Honor women's roster. That is true. I wonder if they're going to incorporate the Ring of Honor women's roster into the AEW women's roster or vice versa. You can just see them go back and forth or something like that. So for the casuals, Jacob, who are the who are the top three women on the Ring of Honor women's roster? Oh, you have uh God, what? I think that's a problem too. If it, it takes you, a wrestling freaking expert, like you're actually having to think, like, gosh, what are their names? <laughs> like, I can picture them. The <laughs> no. they had like their own version of Toxic Attraction with Velvet yeah. Sky and yep. two yep. other women. I mean, when I think when, right now for me personally, and this is probably because I'm follow the Indies. Mm-hmm. When I think Ring of Honor women's roster, I think Maxi and Paler. Okay. Just because she's so different than everyone else. Um, Brynn is good in wrestling. And I'm pretty sure she'd beat the shit out of half the guys on the roster anyways. <laughs> uh, that That's the first person that comes to my mind. Okay. Uh, Angelina Love, that's that's what I'm thinking of. Okay, okay. That's, but, like, honestly, my biggest – something else you, you talk about free agents, Kelly Klein is still technically out there. Who was uber over with the Ring of Honor crowd because she won, she was the Ring of Honor women's champion Mm -hmm. and Ohio girl, too, by the way. Shout out. So, but then she had that lawsuit with Ring of Honor, the old Ring of Honor. Yeah. So, if I'm Tony Khan, I'm showing up to her house and being like, hey, why don't you come back to work? Let's do some, let's let's make some money because that, that would be cool. That'd be cool to see. Because there was one podcast, I think it was before our WrestleMania review, and I was sitting here, I was like, dude, women in AEW, it's almost getting, it was Charlotte territory because Baker was not losing. Like, until she finally lost to Rose, I was like, dude, who was beating this girl? Like, she's beat the whole women's roster twice over. And then she finally lost to Rosa, and that was that was a good L. My problem with Becky's comment, though, is how she brought up Ruby. Just because I was like, you weren't saying that when she was here. That's true, man. That's my it's biggest problem. Like, you weren't yeah, fighting for Ruby be- to get a main event match against you. You were just, you didn't say a damn word. But now that she's left, you want her to be a champion. I just, I didn't like that. Yeah. And then even something else, like, let's say, like, you talk about the Ring of Honor women's roster. Even if you bring them in, you have to build them up. Mm-hmm. Are they talented? Some are very talented. Some aren't very talented. But you still ha- you're still going to have to go through the same process of building someone up. I mean, Britt Baker still had a massive pop when they were in Pittsburgh last week. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. She's always going to get that in Pittsburgh. It's like mm-hmm. a punks in Chicago. Right. I guess this is one of those things, too, where in WWE, if you take out Roman a uh, Roman Roman Reigns main eventing your pay-per-view. There's a legit chance the women could main event the pay-per-views. Like this main oh, event, but in Chicago. So the AW New Japan thing in Chicago. No, there's zero chance a woman like the women's match will main event that pay-per-view. Zero. Oh, yeah, not even close. So I think maybe that's what Becky means. I just didn't like her bringing up Ruby because if you're gonna stick up for them when they're gone, you need to stick up for them when they're here. That's a good take. That's all of a take. All I'm saying on her. But let's go then to Raw a bit. Uh, Randy Orton just had his 20 years as a WWE superstar to the day on Monday. So Monday, 20 years ago, he started. And then this past Monday was his 20-year anniversary. Everyone in the wrestling community was showing 
him love. And man, it's kind of crazy to think that he's been here 20 years because he still looks young and healthy. And besides like small injuries and obviously getting in trouble when he was younger, he's never been away. He's been a staple. I mean, him and Cena had a feud for five years too long. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> but yeah, he, he definitely has been there. And honestly, I think I think Randy Orton's game has elevated tremendously since he grew out the mustache. <laughs> <laughs> well, this this run that he's had with Riddle, which was not supposed to last this long, has been a phenomenal thing and it's reinvigorated him and i think it's crazy like the quotes that he was saying in his interview i think were the most interesting because he's like dude i'm gonna be here longer than roman is in two years roman's gonna be calling Dwayne's agent and i was just like i i don't don't doubt him because like right now we ask every podcast who's gonna beat roman after roman loses he's like he could be like what the hell else do i need to do here time to go to hollywood Randy's like, I'm gonna still be here. I have ten years. I have ten years left if I don't get injured. And I felt like that was very telling that he said he's gonna be here longer than the current top star in the industry for them. I mean, another quote he said was like, uh, "Him and Undertaker are going to be the only ones who never left." Yep. He's yep. Like when you like when when I heard that call, I really started thinking about it. I'm like. Dude, legit. They're going to be like the only two. I mean, yeah. Do we count Triple H in that, or do we? Does he technically left because he went to go do NXT? Because he never left uh, either. He never left, but like, I guess he went like corporate. Okay. He went I'm- for the office job, but like, honestly, you could throw Kane in that talk. Kane's another one too. He was just there. Yeah, I mean, legit, can you think of any other superstars that been there, like, and had a long career and never left? Never left, no, like, never left for other things, movies. Like, Randy did, like, the WWE movies, but he never left for, like, a movie outside of that. That's technically not even leaving. You're doing that for your company. So when he brought up the Taker thing, I'm like, Dude, Taker's been there. He was there 30 years. Randy's at 20. If he does stay another 10, that's 32. I'm just like, this is this is crazy. And he's still relatively like healthy. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And he's so over right now. Yes, with Art. Yes. Uber over with RK, bro. Which is just what a strange pairing that has just sent to the moon just been so good to watch i think he saved riddle because remember we used to talk about it here that dude was under heat with the comments his wife said about the other girls the sexual assault thing and then he said he just like he was under some fire seth rollins saying he never wanted to be in the ring with the dude and here we are i mean nothing nothing topped when uh Randy told him what to say when he apologized to Roman. Yes. That was, that was like, talk about someone taking you, like taking someone under their wing. Like, uh, sorry, bro. Like, yeah, that's pretty much it. Randy's like, fuck him. If he has anything else to say, like, damn, I love it. It's crazy, man. Like, I think, I think Randy looked at Matt Riddle almost like a younger him in a way. Because mm-hmm. Randy was in a lot of trouble when he first started out. Oh, you know, yes, we bags and everything else. <laughs> so I think Randy's like, you know what? I like this guy. I want to make sure he sticks around because Randy has the clout to do it. That is true. But nah, man, just wanted to throw a respect to Randy Orton. 20 freaking years, 2022 is kind of wild. This dude was 24 when he won that first title at SummerSlam. And then, you know, he started messing up. And then once you mess up, Triple H has to come for the shovel, who also saved Randy's career because that dude got him back in line. So, man, shout out to Randy Orton. 20 freaking years. That's loyalty. That is loyalty. So, Jacob, a long time ago, we were recording. 
we're just talking normal stuff. Get the breaking news about the third party ban. WWE shutting everything off. It was some of our people. We talk on this podcast about who are the reasons for it. Alana, Mustafa, all that stuff. Mr. Save Your Balls. Mr. Save Your Balls. Then it comes back that WWE going back on the third party ban, letting these people do stuff again. Uh, The direct, yeah, why they're being allowed uh, to help promote their characters. This Triple H was telling the the roster during WrestleMania weekend, and like there's a whole bunch of happiness uh, with Twitch, Cameo. Obviously, they're making a whole bunch of money on that. We saw how much their pay cuts were. What do you think was the reason they backed off this for a bit? For right now, you know Vince could change his mind and drop his dime, but right now people are allowed to do what they want again to an extent. Yeah, um, I don't know. I got to imagine there was probably constant bitching since it went down. Because that, that was good, easy side hustle money for everyone who did all that stuff. And there was a lot of them that did it. So I feel like you probably constantly heard that just every day. Like, boy, it'd be great if I was on Twitch again. Thanks, Vince. You know, or shit like that. I just feel like there's probably be enough bitching. I can't think of anything else that would, I maybe, don't know. Maybe to keep them. Because there was a reason a lot of those left people left for it. Like Rusev was a big Twitch guy, uh, still is to an extent. Like there was a lot of them who left, and that was one of the first things they said in promotions when they were AEW. It's like, oh, here you could come and wrestle and still stream and make money. Right. Yeah. I. I don't. I don't know what. What do you think could have happened? I agree. The bitching. I do also agree with that was a whole bunch of money that the others were getting, but it also means that maybe that's less money WWE has to pay them since they're getting like side hustle money. And it just, I feel like it just didn't make a good locker room. If you were not going to still allow this third party ban, but then you started that name image and likeness stuff with the college athletes and you're going to be paying them. And I just felt like that was not going to be a good mix. So maybe they're just like, oh, we have to circle back on this. Like it was free exposure. That's what I never understood. These wrestlers were getting people who wouldn't watch wrestling to watch their streams. And that gets more eyes on your product. Mm -hmm. So I never understood that. But of course, WWE can't let good things be good. Because then a couple of weeks later, they send a memo about how the reason they're, they're just changing people's names. Well, people, when you're coming up now, like we went from Walter to Gunter. We went from Raquel Gonzalez to Raquel Rodriguez. Jeez. Uh, they just changed that. We went from Austin Theory to Theory. Like Tommaso Champa to Champa. Like, yeah. What are we? How do you feel about that? I don't like it. I've never liked it. We've been extremely vocal about that. I mean, mm-hmm. what's the point of it? I think. I forget if it was you or uh, Byron. Captain Byron. <laughs> yeah. Who said it would be easier if they didn't show them at all. If it was like a FCW where it was just like a local t- television thing. Mm-hmm. Because like Butch. Butch is a part That's of another example. one. That's another one. Of, you know, I mean... With uh, Walt, Walter and Gunther. I mean, the guy still basically still got the same gimmick, mm-hmm. just a different name change. But it's like, well, Butch, his character completely changed until sc- the scrappy do of the Peaky Blinders. Yeah, I personally don't like the name at all. I also think it's more from a, it's Vince protecting his money because we know when it's a person's real name and like the trademarks and that they leave fighting for their name back because it's their real legal name, that type of stuff. So I just feel like, Oh, if this was your real name or this was your name back then we want your name to be this. We don't know. They could always 
they can always pull a Ryback and legally change their name to Ryback. That that is true too. <laughs> and I guess it's also for a thing that's like where if you're one of those wrestlers, and I think any wrestler coming up now should have a trademark wrestling name ready. Because if you go to one of these companies, they change your name and then you get released. At least you still have that trademark name that you had before you joined. I think that's right. just smart for any any wrestler who's listening to this, like who wants to be a wrestler, should trademark your wrestling name right now before you go anywhere else. And make sure you renew it when yep. it expires. Yep, 100 percent man. One hundred freaking percent. Uh staying with WWE. They announced their big show that they're having. They're having, man, WWE's first UK major stadium event in 30 years. It's going to be in Wales, September 3rd, 2022. I already saw like 50,000 tickets reportedly have already been sold. It's a big deal, but man, if it doesn't, I'm just going to say now, if it doesn't end with, which it won't happen. If it doesn't end with Drew McIntyre beating Roman Reigns, I don't know what the hell is going to make that place happy. Oh, I know it's going to make that place happy. Tyson Fury versus Drew McIntyre. Oh, so you think that's going to happen? Oh, 100% I think that's going to happen. I mean, Tyson Fury just had that big boxing match on Saturday, mm -hmm. and in the press conference literally made sure WWE got dropped and said they got that big pay-per-view coming up. Drew McIntyre's been <laughs> running his mouth. I might have to show up and just, you know, shut him up. I'm like, oh, yeah, well, the UK crowd will go freaking nuts for that. And we know Tyson Fury has a already has a record with WWE because he was a, a Blood Money 2.0. Oh, well. <laughs> okay, okay. I, I did see the, a Finn Balor versus a Gunter match. Some stuff like like having those people, you got to have these people on the card, man. I feel like they're gonna f this up somehow. But this I is a big like you deal. Have to have those, you better have those NXT UK guys there too. Oh yes, yeah, one hundred percent. You but, better have Ilya Dragnov there, one hundred percent. You better have half that NXT UK roster there. I don't care if it's pre-show; they better be there. I agree. I agree. But first one, first ones in 30 years, that's a big, big old since SummerSlam 1992. And we're going to see if this makes a lot of money. They're going to have bigger pay-per-views there. Yeah, I mean, it is crazy because they did sell like 50,000 tickets pretty damn quickly, too. Yeah. And we don't even I know mean, if like that's any American. That might be all overseas. Yeah, it's, it's it's pretty wild if you know, and I, I think it's gonna be a big money maker for him. Well, you know I from a moral standpoint, I would be more happy if this made them so much money where they're just like, you know, maybe we could cut Saudi Arabia. Is that gonna happen? No. Remember, a couple of years ago, I think it was Randy or someone else saying, We're going there, we might be able to bring these people together. And I'm like, Okay, man, okay. Yeah, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that wasn't new, but any, anyway, so Jacob, it came out. Uh, we talked, <laughs> uh, Meltzer, he talked about it on his podcast how the Roman Reigns Brock Lesnar match actually went as planned, so it injuries or whatever didn't affect it. Obviously, Roman wasn't even he might have been hurt then, but he just wrestles at the live events, he's been wrestling at the live events, so it wasn't that serious. So it went as planned, which means that match was planned to be that bad. I mean, does it shock you, though? Well, when everyone was talking about his injury, he's saying it's out, it's out, which did look pretty bad. So I was like, maybe the audible, maybe it was going to be go 10, 15 minutes longer. No, it was meant to be what it was. And that was that's bad, man. That is not the most stupendous, humongous WrestleMania main event of all time. Not even close. Yeah, but I mean, like, if you, I don't know. I guess I look at it like if you look at all the past Brock Lesnar matches, all the past Roman Reigns matches, it's just a finisher signature move shootout. That's all it is. So, I mean, 
like we said when we talked about the lead up to WrestleMania and then the after show, the review show. Mm-hmm. I think we all were, you know, weren't surprised by this match. No, no. I just wanted to point out for people who were saying, oh, it had to end early. Nope. It did not. So he also had his ratings for WW, the WrestleMania. We're just going to go over these real quick. Jimmy and Jay Uso versus Nakamura and Boogs was a 1.5. Obviously, that ended because Boogs got early. Her, Drew McIntyre versus Happy Hogan was a 2.75. Logan Happy Paul. Corbin. Yeah, Happy Corbin and Drew. <laughs> 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 My bad. <laughs> Logan and the Miz versus the Mysterious was a 3.5. Bianca Belair and Becky Lynch was a 4.5. Cody and Seth were a 4.5. Charlotte Flair and Ronda Rousey was a 2. <laughs> and Stone Cold and Kevin Owens was a 3.5 for day one. Uh, day two, RK Bro versus Street Profits versus Alpha Academy, 4.25. Bobby Lashley versus Omos, 0.5. Sasha Banks, Naomi, Carmella, the women's tag was a 2.5. Edge versus AJ, 3.5. Sheamus and Rich Holland versus New, Bo- New Day, 0.25. McAfee versus Theory, 3.75. Vince versus Pat, negative two. And Roman versus <laughs> Brock, 3.25. Man, the one that really sticks out, the two best-rated matches by Meltzer were literally on day one, and they were back-to-back of each other with Bianca and Becky and Cody and uh, Seth. But one that sticks out, man, Charlotte and Ronda, two stars. That's bad. That was a terrible match, though. It was a, it was a terrible match, but it's like, if Stone Cold doesn't show up, you guys were going to be the main event of that Saturday, and that's bad. Yeah, and they're probably going to be the terrible. main event of they're going to be the main event of Backlash because they have an I Quit match, which I really I, that's interesting, but that's bad, man. The Speaking- question is for for that Backlash match <laughs> is that you know there's going to be some interference. The question is who's going to interfere? Ooh, because you're not going to have. That's not going to be clean. It's not going to be clean at all. There's no way. You you can't do it clean. And Ronda's not going to be one who says, I quit. And then if she beats Charlotte, we know Charlotte's going to get a rematch, and she's going to get the title back. Yeah. Because Ronda's not here for this long. Yep. Which was Uh, still a shocker how she beat. Now, Ronda lost to Charlotte, which was just crazy. I mean... (sighs) I don't know what kind of shocked me the most. I think Logan Paul deserved a better rating. 3. I also 5? think Vince McMahon deserved a better rating because I was so entertained during that match. Both those <laughs> matches. Oh, a negative two. That is that is bad. But to stay on WrestleMania, how every people using this as a quote unquote tease on Young Rock, uh, mid April. They're showing the family, the whole big family watching wrestling. There's this young man who asked this, uh, The Rock if they were ever going to wrestle. And he said, a match that big can only happen at WrestleMania. That young man with the little fro was a young Joe, a.k.a. Roman Reigns. So, Jacob, if your stuff does happen, WWE has been booking this match since 1994. <laughs> I just wanted to throw that out there just because you've obviously been the forefront bus train driver of the Roman of the Roman versus rock is going to happen. So apparently the people were like, oh, man, they've been booking this since 94, which is false. But I just wanted to throw that out there for you. Yeah, I seen that. And I'm like, yep. I mean, it's definitely happening. I just I. I, I get more and more to your side every week I see him, like, wrestle. Because also, Roman Reigns hit 600 days as champ, and he needs 428 for some, cra- which is crazy. They're like, oh, this is possible that he could get 1,000. And I'm sitting here, I was like, this is crazy how wrestling experts really, like, it's not crazy to say out loud, oh, Roman Reigns is going to be champ for 1,000 days. Like, that's not crazy. That's more possible than not possible now. 
Oh, for sure. It's going to happen. Which he'll be hitting two years this summer, which is also, it's, it's nuts, man. Like there's, I know we've talked about the people we talked about it on the last podcast, who's going to beat Roman. But each, each week, man, I'm just like, I don't know. I don't know. And it, it, it's not that if the match is going to happen, we, it's going to happen. There's no doubt. Mm-hmm. The question is, is who, and, and we ask this like every podcast, who ends up beating Roman? Yeah. Because it's not going to be Dwayne. I, I, I guarantee it's not going to be Dwayne. Yeah. They're going to book it so Dwayne is going to look like he's going to whip his ass. No mm-hmm. doubt. It's going to be a, probably going to be a hilarious buildup. Like, I guarantee I'll be sports entertained. But sports entertain the verb, <laughs> yeah. Um, but like it's it's got to come down to who's who's the guy after that. That's where I think you're going to see. See, either who's the guy, the following pay per view or it's SummerSlam after that mania. You wait for SummerSlam. That's three years as champion. Yeah. That's crazy. That is so. That, that, is that so, will be over 1,000 days. That is crazy. We'll see, man. It's going to be interesting from a rock standpoint. WWE is having a breakout tournament, uh, the NXT Women's Breakout Tournament. I don't know if it's going to be the same thing. Like, if people who've listened to us remember, the May Young Classic, that was it. You saw a, a lot of women who are wrestling right now, you met them through the May Young Classic. Obviously, Shayna, Bianca, Tony, Storm, the Rock, like all of them. And that, and I used to watch those. Those were banger matches. They made everything feel important. So I don't know if this is their same way, but it looks like Rock's daughter Simone definitely wants in on the tournament. She's still signed with NXT. So we'll see if that happens. But Jacob, I don't know if you've heard Undertaker is potent- is going to have a podcast. Uh, they're convincing him to do one. So that's cool. But he talked about another one of your favorites, if not your favorite, Bray Wyatt, saying that I hope things get worked out with him somewhere because he's a phenomenal talent. And I think he has a lot to offer to the industry. Hopefully at some point he comes home. Obviously. Undertaker is goaded among goaded among goaded. But I have the same problem with what Becky said about Ruby. Bray Wyatt didn't just want to leave. Y'all let him go. So yeah. why are you telling him to come home when it was Vince and them who let him go after? Because we all knew after he lost that match at WrestleMania to Randy Orton on one or KO because of Alexa Bliss, and they basically gave his gimmick to Alexa Bliss, we knew it was over. So, like, I, how did you feel about Taker's like, oh, I hope he comes home, even though home's the thing that kicked him out? Yeah. Yeah. Um, how do I feel about it? I mean, I think it's cool that The Undertaker, oh, hey, you know, acknowledging Bray Wyatt. Bray Wyatt like should have broke the streak. That would have been someone who, we talk about Roman, it should have been Brock. Well, Brock shouldn't, and that's a whole other thing. That streak, that's a whole other podcast. But... If Bray would have broke the streak the next year at 31, hot hell. Right. I mean, shit, I don't know. He's still another person who's still out there. He, he is. He definitely is. And I don't know. Could he, could he pull a Cody and come back and – do something crazy, but at the same time, he's not going to have the push or the clout that Cody has because Cody went out and did AEW. Mm-hmm. Bray Wyatt is just hanging at home, raising his kids with JoJo on their farm. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I feel like Undertaker was definitely in Bray Wyatt's corner. Yes. Probably just, you know, Taker being Taker, it wasn't public or extremely vocal. Mm-hmm. It could have been more vocal backstage and we just don't know about it. I mean, because Taker's going to choose who he wants to face at Mania. Yep. And he chose Bray Wyatt. And 
I don't know. I feel like I just feel like if Undertaker is going to talk, you know, do something, talk with someone, or do a match with someone, I just feel like he has to have their back in a way. He has to completely trust them and be like, yeah, your character is great. Yeah, the storyline is going to be cool. Blah, 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 whatever. I guess now that he's retired and he doesn't have to worry about, like, I mean, he was a locker room leader. I was going to say backstage politics. He's retired now. I could be like, hey, Vince, man, have you? Have you thought about like bringing Bray back or like talking to Bray? Like I don't, he might be, we don't know. He might be texting him privately. He's like, Hey man, just checking on you. Hope you're good. Maybe they're meeting us. Like, Hey, have you ever thought about like going back? I can get you in a sit down with Vince. Cause we know Taker can like, Oh yeah. But maybe that's what's going on behind the scenes. I don't know. We all thought he was going to show up at AEW last year at Halloween. And that did not happen. Yeah. That, that still kind of shocked me. You know, or even him doing a control your narrative. I guess I could have seen him just like showing up and doing a random match or something. I did see the picture with the Wyatt family reuniting. Yeah, that was cool. That was cool. But talk about someone who might go back. I'm not saying they're going back, but it's interesting now. The inspiration, a.k.a. the Iconics, just out of, I don't know, this came out of nowhere for me, taking a step back indefinitely as a team, like, Jacob, what do you think about that? Are they leaving, leaving that? Or are they trying to go back to WWE or they just need a break? Like, what do you think's going on? I have no idea. I don't pay that much attention to impact Mm -hmm. unless I, unless, you know, I don't pay attention to impact unless I see something come up. It's like, oh my God, you have to see this on impact. That's like, all right, well, look it up. Right. Unless it's something like that, I really just don't pay that much attention to it. And so I knew the Iconics were there. And I have no idea what happened. I don't, I don't even know if they wanted a title, to be completely honest. Uh, they had the titles when they first when they first got there, and then they lost the titles. But it was just weird because they both, like, wrote – like, they had the same statement saying, like, we're taking a step back indefinitely. And I'm like – typically, I'm like, okay, is – are because they do everything together, like they don't work without each other. It's like, is it something that Peyton's or um, is she or Peyton slash Cassie, real name Cassie, is she pregnant or something like that? I felt like that would have already been spoiled by the dirt sheets and all of that. Like, it was just, and I'm just like, this is just kind of odd that they they uh just today just basically gave letters of recommend of resignation. Or bit felt like it was on Jacob. Whoever is running the WWE on Bleacher Sport uh, Twitter page, they're kind of funny because obviously after Becky made her comments, they posted something today saying twenty four different women were featured over a two hour show on NXT. So they're like, all right, Becky. Becky's saying like women, so we got to make sure we're showcasing all of our women. And then they also had the thing where Cody Rhodes signed. They're like, Cody Rhodes is now signed with WWE. As you know, AEW always does the so-and-so is all all elite. But it's good for the women, man. Like, And you have some more main event people going. Not main event. Main roster people going to NXT. Viking Raiders just were there yesterday. Obviously, you have Natalia there where doing her job. But... Jacob, now with AEW getting older, they get older by the day, and all the roster talent they have there, are they already in that thing? Because there's a lot of people clamoring on. So you already know how the internet wrestling community is like, man, these people signed from WWE, and we haven't seen them in months. We don't even know if they're still there, especially from a guy's perspective. Like, how do you feel in they're managing the roster now? And do they need to, like, pump the brakes on signing people for a bit it just depends okay because i feel like some people like yeah definitely sign them right off the right off the rip Mm -hmm. but then other people it's like i seen a meme it was a kid eating an apple Mm -hmm. except he had like eight apples and on each apple it had like different wrestlers that aew signed Mm -hmm. that like there's Miro on there yeah. and a bunch of other people. And I just had like, to- and the kid, they had Tony Khan over and they had him like taking a bite out of the Samoa Joe apple, but every apple's only got like a bite out of it. So it's like, dude, I, 
I don't know. I mean, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't sign any more people because you, I just feel like you need to build more, build up this, your roster more, not like buy more people or pick up more people, but actually just pick up this roster and just go into some sort of more storyline ish things. I mean, they're doing their, their best. I mean, like I know like with the new Jericho faction, he's trying to build up those guys. Right. And you know, I don't know. I, I just can't, I don't know who the hell they'd sign. Well, I feel like every time someone gets released, they're like, oh, yeah, let's go sign them. And then most of the time they do. But then it's like they have this. And it, I saw the meme today because we brought up Cassie, a.k.a. Peyton, where Cody Rhodes was wrestling. And remember, Sean came out of nowhere, smacked Cody upside the head. And that was one of the biggest things ever. They're like, oh, my gosh, Sean Spears is signed with AEW. Hasn't done anything relevant since that smack. Yeah. Fuck Sean Spears. I do not like him. <laughs> I know you don't, but I was just bringing that up for the example. I, I, it's a great, it's a great point. I mean, the biggest thing Sean Spears really did, I think, was like that stadium stampede match. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, honestly, I mean, my I thing: if Dean goes back, if John Moxley goes back. The WWE after he left the way he did coming there and all the shit he was saying, then I'm gonna be a little concerned with AEW a little bit because I'm like, ah, you can't be you can't be having people leave to go back there, right? Because the Cody thing changed everything, man. It really did change my eyes. Oh, yeah, Cody going to WWE is going to be something that's just like you're gonna look back years from now and years from now, like, yeah, that that was history. Mm-hmm. Just like AEW getting made, like oh wow, this is yes. this is history, and then seeing the one of the flagship guys go over, it's like shit. And okay, it's been, and has been presented so far. It's still early in the year as the main a main event player. Um, he's on, been in like the main event every every Raw since yeah. Mania. Yeah, he has. My thing too with that, and someone said it was a good thing, but. We gave a lot of, we know uh, the part-time champs really started when Rock beat Punk at the Royal Rumble in 2013. Obviously, he was a different part-time champ than Brock Lesnar. Dude was taking his title to, like, Hollywood Walk of Fames, all that crap. But when Brock Lesnar became champ when he beat Cena at SummerSlam, we had all those pay-per-views, all those shows without the champion there. And as purists... It kind of sucks because we want to see the champ. He's the, supposed to be he's supposed to be the top billing. Since winning at WrestleMania, and even before that, it was starting. Roman Reigns has not been on Raw. He's technically a double champ. Dude doesn't wrestle on SmackDown, doesn't wrestle on Raw. I are you okay? I know it, it's we deemed it. It's a full-time part-time champ. Are you okay with like this now? Because me personally, I'm just like, dude, I know you're here. Like, why are you not? Like, they've made him such a special attraction. Like, you'll get lucky to see him on the shows now. I mean, do I like it? Not particularly, but he is a heel. I feel like that's a very good heel thing to do. Mm-hmm. And yes, he's a full time, part time. You still see the champion, though. Yeah, yeah. Right now, Roman Reigns is more focused with the Usos unifying the tag team champions right now. But do you think do you think they're gonna win? Yeah. Man, that's tough. I I do too, but we just talked about how over RK Bro is. Yeah, and it, it would be it's kind of weird because they just went through this entire Randy Orton week on social media and everything. <laughs> so but yeah, I I think the Usos are going to go over. Um, because they're they're not going to stop the the bloodline, and I believe I said it on the WrestleMania pre-show mm-hmm. episode. Don't quote me on that, but I'm ninety nine percent sure I said like it's going to go back to like the Raw Super Shows and the SmackDown Super Shows where there wasn't 
you know, the draft, there wasn't a draft. There was just one giant unified roster. Yeah. So I, I think they're going back in that direction. And I think it'll be like that for five, six years. And then I'll go back. Oh, we're going to bring back the draft. There was like, oh my God, he's getting drafted where and all this shit. I think it's just an easy thing for WWE to do. That's good. Good point. Jacob, anything else, man, that you want to hit on before we sign off? I don't know, man. I we pretty much covered it. Yeah, we, I mean, shout out to you for making up the list of all the stuff we talked about. <laughs> though, like for for real, one hundred percent. Shout out to Martin here right now. Thank you, thank you. The only thing I had to add is just because it was his birthday a couple of days ago. A uh, happy belated birthday to Mister John Felix Anthony Senior Junior. Cena Jr. turned 45. Crazy. Oh. Crazy shit. Living that um, quiet life. I, you know what? Something we didn't talk about. Oh, go There's ahead. been no spring cleaning let goes yet this year. Let's end it on that. That is true. Uh, April 15th in the wrestling world uh, is usually a week after WrestleMania is spring cleaning, as Jacob eloquently stated. That's usually when mass releases happen. Obviously, in the L7C's short existence, we have probably covered the biggest spring cleanings of wrestling history. So fortunate that we've been able to cover those in our short time. Very unfortunate for all those people who got fired. I, I mean, there was a whole list. We could have made a roster co- to compete with any promotion with the people who got released. So this time there was none in. I was shocked. There wasn't even like one release. Yeah, which is it because they had so many, so many roster uh, roster let go last year. So much I, of them. I think so. I think so. The past two years they've gotten rid of like literally a whole show. I mean, I think Mitch Ozo said it best. Mm-hmm. For a while there, we weren't really talking wrestling. We were really just talking roster updates. Yeah. <laughs> on here like every every other week it was always something so i i think it's i think it's a really good chance it's because they let so many people go as long and a lot of those people have found their jobs elsewhere a lot of people are still there's still some free agents out there but i was just happy man because those days do get sad because we're just sending our messages like dude what the f is going on and it's always on my birthday too, which I find hilarious. Because I'll be like, you know, doing whatever on my birthday, and it's like, all right, well, let's keep an eye on social media, see who gets let go today. I mean, that's just been the thing for the past two years now. Oh yeah, the one starts, and then you see the stuff on social media. Like, there's more to come in three, two, one. Oh, Carrie Cross, what? Carrie Cross was just over. Scarlet, like what? Oh my gosh, those were guys. If you want to laugh, listen to those podcasts on the thing. We got pissed. Oh, yeah. Because it made nothing, nothing will get me more mad than the Samoa Joe one. The fact they had this dude doing WrestleMania in the rain Saturday <laughs> and Sunday and got rid of him that Tuesday. Nothing will ever get me more mad. The Peyton Royce one got me hot, too, because she dropped the promo of her life. Finally got a chance against Oscar. Then like, all right, you got your chance. You're out of here. Like my thing now, which I don't think will ever happen. WWE either cut down the non-complete time, uh, compete time is like ninety days. Cut it down to like sixty or thirty, so those people can get work or don't have it at all. Will that happen? No, but just throwing it out there. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you on that one. Anything else, man? I don't know. I can't really think of much. Speaking of Karrion Cross, congratulations to him and Scarlett. They got married on a random glacier in alaska yeah so there's a, that's that's cool i guess there's a lot of weddings congratulations to them congratulations to alexa bliss on getting married hopefully you come back to work congratulations to carmella and Corey graves you know yeah, don't really like them but congratulations to all those people who got <laughs> married <laughs> but i think that is it with us you guys already know thank you everyone for listening to the l7c podcast we are back doing our bi-weekly wrestling. You'll hear from us in a couple of weeks. It'll probably be right after Backlash. So we'll hear how the shenanigans happen with the Flair versus Rousey match. And you'll hear how 
shaking our heads we are during that time. But once again, thank you everyone for listening to the L7C podcast. You guys take care. Thank you for listening to this episode of the L7C podcast. Be sure to like, rate, review, and subscribe to the channel. Follow us on all social media platforms, and we'll be talking to you guys soon. Take care.